Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira, and in this video I'm going to go through a few of the highlights of the Construct 3 release 440. Let's dive in. Now first up, in this release we have a major update for coding in Construct. We now support TypeScript coding inside the Construct editor itself. Previously this was supported but using an external editor. Now it's built into Construct itself which makes it much easier to use. So if I switch to the example browser now, uh, you'll find there's a new coding section for examples. Uh, you can filter to just event sheets only if you're not interested in coding, but there's also all our old JavaScript examples. And now there's a whole batch of new TypeScript examples. Many of these are based on the old JavaScript examples and updated to use TypeScript instead. One of these is Spellcaster Code. Now, I'm not going to go through everything about what TypeScript is and how it works in uh, this video, but in brief, it's a, sort of a layer on top of JavaScript um, which uh, has static types. So this means every variable and object has a specific type, uh, whereas JavaScript is completely dynamic. TypeScript was invented by uh, Microsoft um, several years ago and it's uh, got increasing adoption across the industry and we're pleased to now bring support for it to uh, Construct as well. Now, if you've used JavaScript coding before, TypeScript will look very familiar. It is, in fact, very similar. It's, well, it's based on JavaScript, so um, much of your existing code will work the same. But what's new is the addition of type annotations. So, for example, here in a function, the runtime parameter has a type annotation after the colon to state uh, what type of parameter that is. And you'll need type parameters in various other places. Um, such as in uh, uh, functions or the parameters have a type annotation and in classes as well you'll, you'll need to use the class fields feature of uh, JavaScript but using type annotations to declare what every kind of property um, is. So then t the TypeScript compiler knows what those types are and can verify them correctly. So that's one example of uh, TypeScript um, in Construct, give it a spin. We'll be working on all our documentation and tutorials for this in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. So I just want to highlight a little bit more of the benefits of TypeScript. Um, one uh, place where it's very useful is actually for beginners. So if you're thinking about getting into coding, TypeScript may be a better place to start. And to illustrate this, uh, I've got a project here which uh, demonstrates a common mistake that people use when getting into JavaScript coding. So here uh, we have a simple project with just a sprite and uh, I've written some code that attempts to move the sprite to a different position more closer to the middle of the screen. And uh, the code I've written is this. And it looks like it ought to do the job because it takes the sprite object and uh, sets its x and y properties. Uh, but if we run that, uh, it doesn't actually change the position of the sprite. And uh, worse still, if I check the browser console, there are no errors. So people often get confused at this point and think, uh, why hasn't this worked? Now the reason for the mistake is because uh, this here, sprite, refers to the object type. That's um, essentially a whole class of um, instances, as opposed to a specific instance of the sprite object. If you think about it this way, if there are three instances of that sprite, which one are you changing the position of? So this, um, we have to change this code to specify that we want to change the position of an instance rather than an object type. Now I can uh, switch this project over to TypeScript and illustrate how TypeScript catches this mistake for you and will highlight this as incorrect code. Now to switch this to TypeScript I can also show a handy feature of Construct which is that in the uh, project bar if you right click on scripts and in this TypeScript submenu you can switch the project to TypeScript. Uh, and in a TypeScript project, you can also switch it back to JavaScript. Now, all this does is essentially rename all, all your .js files to .ts. It doesn't actually change any of the code for you, uh, because that's a very complicated thing to do, so it's not supported. But uh, it means all you then need to do is add type annotations to the existing code, and uh, now you've got your code in TypeScript instead. And now you'll see that it highlights this as uh, incorrect code. Uh, it says the property x does not exist on sprite because it's an object type, not an instance. Uh, so this demonstrates how TypeScript has allowed um, uh, beginner level code to uh, more usefully identify a mistake. 
and it won't let you preview the project now because uh, it's got a, uh, a problem with it. So then I can change this code to uh, be w what it ought to be. Uh, so I'll just uh, get the instance from uh, the sprite object type. So here, um, what you really need to do is say get first instance because there's only one, so we might as well get the first one. And another thing about TypeScript, that could be null, so you have to add an exclamation mark to tell it um, that it won't be null, because there definitely is an instance there. And then I can change these to change the X and Y properties of that instance, and now it's valid code. So if I run that, it's now changed the position of the sprite object. So that's just a quick demonstration of how TypeScript can actually help you get started with coding. There's a little bit more to learn with uh, the type annotations, but um, it will help catch common mistakes for you. Uh, one more thing to briefly cover about TypeScript is um, you can also mix and match TypeScript and JavaScript code. So here I've got a, um, a small JavaScript module uh, which doesn't use type annotations. You can see that's JavaScript code, which just returns a string. So this is some TypeScript code I have here that can import JavaScript code. Um, so that's a good way to incrementally move a project uh, to TypeScript, perhaps, or more easily introduce uh, third-party code into a TypeScript project if that code happens to be in JavaScript. That's all I'm going to cover about TypeScript in this video. There's plenty more to say about that, but for reasons of time, I'll move on. Uh, be sure to keep an eye out for more news and documentation appearing about that. Next up, I'm going to highlight a new plugin we've added into Construct. This is called Construct Game Services, and you can find it here in the web section. So at the moment, this has a single action uh, to submit a score and you can find it here. So at the moment, if you publish your game to the Construct Arcade, you can use this to submit a score to the new Arcade Leaderboards feature. So uh, it's literally as simple as using this one action to submit whatever score you want. And for the Construct Arcade, you leave the leaderboard ID empty. So that's just an empty string. And that now works. You can publish your project to the Construct Arcade, and as soon as you submit a score, a leaderboard will appear. So you can have some fun with that. Um, we have bigger plans for Construct Game Services. Um, in future, we hope to bring leaderboards to um, uh, all projects, even those not on the Construct Arcade uh, for all platforms, and uh, also additional features like achievements and um, some other game services along those lines. OK, uh, moving on again. Um, there's another new feature in uh, relating to functions in event sheets. So if you've used functions, these are a handy way to reuse event blocks across a project. And now we have a new uh, ability, which might be handy, to rename the built-in functions object. So this previously um, was not renameable. The functions object here does not appear in the project bar, um, so it wasn't something you could easily rename. Now you can right-click on that, choose rename, and for example, if you just want to give it a really short name, like F, you can do that and now that will appear in your project with just the name f and that's particularly handy if you use lots of function expressions as well so you don't have to keep typing out function in the uh, expression okay another thing to highlight in this release is if you go to settings you'll find a new button here that says enable multi-monitor features so i'm not using a multi-monitor setup here but if you do uh, you want to be sure to click this button and this will activate some uh, additional features to help with multi-monitor setups. Um, it may well show a permission prompt, so be sure to click allow. And now this will mean that Construct can remember the position of pop-up windows across multiple monitors and it will also uh, now uh, automatically open pop-up windows um, where you previously had them open. This applies to these uh, user interface bars here in the editor. It ap applies to the uh, preview window here, and it also applies to the debugger um, with its um, pop-out uh, window here. So again, this is showing the um, same permission prompt for the preview window uh, to manage multi-monitor um, windows. And so this uh, pop-out window for the debugger can now also automatically reopen and also remember its position across displays. So that's a great feature if you have multiple monitors. 
While I'm looking at the debugger, um, I'll just quickly switch over to a um, different example. Uh, here's one involving hierarchies. So there's been a range of improvements to the debugger in this release as well. Uh, first of all, you can ex now expand and collapse these sections here, uh, which is a useful way to um, manage lots of information. And also, um, if I find the body instance, there it is, uh, there's properties to control the instance time scale. And there's now, now also a section to um, navigate through the hierarchy from the debugger. So um, this instance is the root of the hierarchy and I can, for example, move through all its child instances and then back up to the parent. Um, so that will help you make sense of your hierarchies when using the debugger. Okay, there's plenty more in this release as ever. Uh, I'm not going to cover um, everything uh, for time again, um, but be sure to check the full release notes. Um, and just in closing, as ever, there's a batch of great new examples that come with this, re this release of Construct. Uh, Airborne Explorer is a whole new demo game uh, that you can try out, it's great fun. Uh, and the version of this published to the Construct Arcade has a high scoreboard for best combo. Um, this is an interesting new example of uh, the Apache eCharts library, so this just shows how you can uh, embed a third-party JavaScript library for charting uh, into Construct. That's a great um, use of uh, coding and the HTML capabilities of Construct. It's a really powerful library. Um, there's also examples for multiplayer file transfer based on the multiplayer binary transfer feature that's new in this release that I haven't covered in this video. And uh, Synth Sunset is a great new um, timeline animated 3D retro style um, example which has some uh, uh, really cool visuals uh, and things in it. So um, whilst this plays, um, I'll just say uh, thank you for using Construct. We hope you enjoy this release. And um, as I mentioned, be sure to check the uh, full release notes uh, for everything new in this release and be on the lookout for more information about TypeScript coming in the future. Thanks for watching.